opposed us. And then killed his friends, like slaughtered his friends. Wait, now let's start from scratch. What are you talking about? You killed your friends with poisonous mushrooms? What? Yes. And your name is? This is Jordan Griska. Hi, Jordan. Hi, what? how's it going? You are the legendary Jordan Greska. Uh, yes, from so. the Fleischer Ullman show. Very good. With the gas tank. How's that look? Hey, one nail left. Who are you? Oh, well, uh, I am Karen Kunkel, <laughs> and I'm the director of the Philadelphia Salon. I do everything. <laughs> and you're very dressed up because? I had a very nice meeting today with the Philadelphia Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts. They're an excellent organization. It uh, is available to all artists in Philadelphia. And what are you trying to get from them? Oh, uh, all my ducks in a row for the salon. Okay, so the salon, you have roving exhibitions in different places, is that the idea? Yeah, we use empty space like this, which is provided to us by Alan Dom, and we manipulate the space to uh, meet our needs. So we make sure that all of our art communicates what we want to as artists to the public in a show like this. Here we have two screen prints on aluminum by Pete Zebley. These are both prints of the same woman, Bonnie Sweeten. Bonnie Sweeten is the woman who said she was kidnapped and then actually turned out to be in Disney World with her kid. Pete really likes to use images that are randomly found, popular culture, things that you find on the metro or just hear about on the radio. And he'll take those random images and incorporate them to a commentary on, you know, what our culture glorifies or glamorizes and how they do that. And I remember Pete does both kind of representational and abstract stuff. Yeah, I think he might have done this one while he was living in Berlin. Here we have three pieces done by John Williams. John Williams is an incredible artist. He works a lot in a geometric street art style. I include him in the category of artists that I call conjunctionists, who kind of combine like art history and contemporary art techniques and capabilities and traditional things, like watercolor, but with ink in a very graffiti style way. So almost like someone is working in a you know, a graffiti notebook or like a, a tag book. Something that you would almost see at Patha, like a traditional geometric abstracted form, but it's totally got this contemporary uh, twist to it with a traditional medium. Intel, who... What's that? Say that again? Intel, capital N, capital T, capital E, capital L. Related to the chip maker? Intel? Oh, no, I think he probably wishes. He'd probably <laughs> buy a lot more art supplies. No, Intel is a really cool kid. He's like a mystery and enigma of a person. He's really hard to uh, find or get a hold of. He spends a lot of time working on his street art. This is the first of a series of pieces that he started using the alphabet. So he cuts out all of these different uh, letters from the alphabet. He makes up his own fonts. And this one over here is this mannequin. It took him three years to make. It's really wild. He cut out each letter from the alphabet five times. And they're cut out of felt? Or? Cut out of felt. Each one is hand cut and hand applied and they all overlap each other. Some of them are just like icons. Like uh, here we have a very recognizable icon. How did you meet him? Uh, gosh. Uh, I hunted him. <laughs> oh, you saw his stuff? I saw his stuff and I hunted him down. But fortunately, he knew some people that I was friends with, so he didn't think I was totally nuts. A stalker, uh -huh. a crazed, yeah, a crazed, stalker. yeah. I think I've been accused of that. Okay, and what's? And then here's Luca Ciriani. Luca Ciriani is a really dynamic artist. He's got some really, really edgy stuff going on. He conjoins traditional, almost you know, mythological images, but it's totally a contemporary subject. It appears as if it would be unfinished, but truly all the information that you need to understand or get reaction from this piece is here. So all the images are here, either in negative shape, just this negative shape of this face. You understand that it's a face and you don't need any more information because you understand that it's a runner. Is it, you know, someone running away from danger or someone who caused this danger? You, you don't really know and it's subjective. He uses powerful, dynamic compositions that really draw you into the piece and make you pay attention to everything that's going on. Powerful stuff. But then he uses these like total kitsch pop art colors that make you think that 
something that is totally revolting of an image is actually something that's safe to get up close to. Here we have Sam Metcalf. I remember Sam Metcalf. When I first met you guys, he was doing these... These pieces down here. Yeah, the window. Where he took his hands completely out of the piece and made it just about the process, where he would make, you know, about 300 pieces and then just choose one from that day and keep it. All of the pieces were made without him touching the paper. So it's just through printing processes almost, but with uh, paint. And so with these, actually, he kind of is doing the same thing. He's kind of taking the artist out of the art. These are toothpaste, and they're of a degenerative nature. So the But no, it's not real toothpaste. It is real He's toothpaste. He's painting with toothpaste? Toothpaste in between glass. So, you know... Can uh, <laughs> see through to the, to the back. <laughs> Where do you get blue and red? Is that bleeding gums or what's the? I don't know. <laughs> he has gingivitis. You might tell him. <laughs> uh, so you actually smell good too. It smells like toothpaste, cinnamon, cinnamon toothpaste. <laughs> oh yeah. You can get a lot of different things with toothpaste. So he's pursuing this right now. Here is... This is a piece by Brian Guglielmi. He's a Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts graduate. He's a great painter. This is called The Jaws of Capitalism. And I think it's just a comment on the, the bear and the bull market. To me, that's how I read it. You can probably interpret it as you wish. We have one piece by Wendy Wolf still here. People started taking stuff home already. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Well, I got a good bit of it. Go so, ahead. Wendy Wolf uh, did a beautiful installation for us. She is an artist who normally works with nature, but because of the indoor venue, she hand cut out of a plastic paper all these natural leaves, exact copies of leaves, and then she made installations throughout the gallery with the leaves, and then out of the cutouts, she made these beautiful pieces that have multiple layers. The quality of the paper was so tough and endurable that, as you can see, as the door opens, stuff blows in from the street. So parts of her installation started coming down and the leaves of this, off the street and the leaves of her installation started mingling together on the floor and just got, you know, stepped on by everybody and kind of weathered the same. It was very interesting. It was almost like the, the building was uh, deteriorating organically. But this is Mark Bullen. Oh, I know Mark Bullen. Wait, Mark Bullen? Mark Bullen, the real Mark Bullen. He was the class that he went to the academy back in he my sure day. Mm -hmm. oh, very good. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing great. He's a nice He's guy. He's making art. He's nice as ever. He loves to talk. <laughs> which is great because I love to talk too. This is actually a larger piece that he did of a detail that's in a a much larger piece in his studio that he's working on for his upcoming show. The detail that was in his larger work, which was just this, was so beautiful and striking. You know, we had a conversation about how that could be a whole painting in itself, and so he experimented with it. I think it came out amazing. It's really great. And then this is a study for another piece that he's doing, which I think is really beautiful. I'm going to put it in this light so you can see it. Huh. It's really sexy. Sort of like a Rubens figure in a wheelbarrow. Yeah, it's like Rubens meets Wyeth meets... <laughs> kind of reminds me of... What's, who makes that painting of the side of meat? De Kooning? The, Bacon? No, it's like a whole cow. Yeah. De Kooning? Damien Hurst? <laughs> no. Uh, or, Damien Hurst. Uh, we have a limited collective knowledge of art history. Yeah. Eaten. We have a sneak attack artist. Somebody wants to join the collective. What kind of creature is that? I don't know. Is that an anteater dog? I don't know, but he's pretty nice. Uh, that's hilarious. Oh, I'm probably oh. going to get in trouble for that. Is it? It's his buddy. Yeah, I'm oh, definitely going to get in trouble for that. <laughs>